Hey there all, welcome to another world building session. Um, today I'm doing this very, very early, so sorry, I've just showered, I've just, uh, I'm just, I'm out and ready to go, but that's because I have a plumber coming over later on, so uh, <laughs> take of that what you will. So today's, today's lesson is going to be about history and conflict, and we spoke about this uh, a little bit in the last video, um, this is this kind of ties into cultures and communities in a way that, um, like a lot of things, don't. Uh, like I said, in cultures and communities, that nothing really changes culture and community in the way that conflict and and war does. Um, that kind of is so very prevalent nowadays in the way our cultures are split and how our communities are split down political lines, um, down moral lines. And um, as much as people kind of don't want to and as much as people kind of go, oh, well, politics has nothing to do with anything. I mean, it does. Like, there's no... Uh, the, like, when you look into your the, the way that culture and community is formed... It's pretty much the backbone of all of it. Even if we feel like the system might not be completely right for what we need as 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 uh, progressive creatures, uh, the the backbone of society tends to be these kind of moral views that we have and how we uh, kind of come together as a as a community behind these moral views. And that's the same to be said for any of our. Uh, creations that we make when we're creating anything for our world building so let's do this let's go let's see what we've got okay so once again uh to anyone that isn't a student of mine i'm really sorry we are once again going through uh my uh, incredible powerpoints uh, again, once I once I finish going through all the basic stuff, then uh, and I start doing more in depth stuff, uh, if if I get the time, he hopes, uh, we will look into not using powerpoints anymore, and I'll do something a little bit more interesting. But for now, uh, it is teacher time, and I'm going to use a powerpoint. So history and conflict so we've already we've already discussed the title of today's uh, lesson so let's let's crack on so why do people wage war why do people why is there conflict in the world now i've not put these in any particular order so before you start getting upset at me for the order of these um these were just kind of i reeled these off and then put them in a in a list so the first one we have is Oh, I forgot. I even I even apologized in my in my PowerPoint. Um, it is a little bit of an existential question, and it is a little bit political. It's not just a little bit political. It's 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 very political. War is political, you know. Um, it's it's power. It's about power dynamics, and and those kind of things come up through politics and war. Simple as that. So, religion. Um, has always been a big one from the Crusades uh, and and kind of the pagan invasions back in the day when um, kind of went the other way around and and uh, it tended to be more kind of uh, pagans taking on Christian values um, rather than the other way around. Political reasons, uh, dictatorships, communism, capitalism. If someone, if if one country is against one way of doing something, and they believe that it is detrimental to the way of life of that country, it doesn't mean it has to be detrimental to the way of life of that country. But if they believe it is, then they might wage war to try and free that country of its its dictatorship or or whatever it is. Resources. Resources is a big one, you know, like oil, um, gold, diamonds, whatever it is, whatever kind of things you choose to have in your world. If it's something like a fuel supply or a uh, um, uh, 
a precious resource or a magical item those resources might be required for for the advancement of a uh, uh, a community or a civilization and maybe you know it's only available in one place and without fighting over it there's no real way to get it unless you've done some kind of agreement that allows everyone to have access to that single resource money money is as much as people say it money is the root of all evil um money I, I suppose money's not the root of all evil i think i think greed is probably the root of all evil in in a sense like the we have to remember that money is is very much something that um we created you know we created this this way of exchanging um uh commodities for a piece of paper or for a coin or something like that and do the coins have any uh, real value is the question. Like nowadays, we barely even touch cash. All we have are these little plastic cards that have digits assigned to them. And we swipe them and that's it. We get things in return. And what what that really is when you look, when you boil it down is um, those numbers relate to how valuable our time is to someone else or to a to a cause or to a uh, kind of um to to society i guess in in a sense like how valuable is the time that we put into working to society and that is how that is gauged glory and conquest so glory and conquest is um the, that's that's a weird one i guess we don't really do we not have that nowadays? Um, I don't think we do as such. Uh, but if you look at kind of, uh, yeah, like the the, the Vikings or um, Genghis Khan or any of those kind of uh, ancient civilizations that conquested across the world to try and expand their influence, um, glory and conquest... You might have leaders in your world that that want that kind of glory, that that, that their gods demand that kind of glory, or that their um, their their or that their communities only see value in that kind of um, leader who can take them across the world and and exert influence for their culture everywhere. And self defense, obviously, if you've got someone conquesting into your lands. Um, how do you how do you stop them like if they come with a hammer are you going to stand there and let them take your knees or are you gonna are you gonna go for it are you gonna um, defend your country and it may not end well you know that's that's the that's the worrying thing that's the scary thing for, for anyone on the defensive is that um, if someone comes invading they've obviously been preparing for this and sometimes as a defender you've not been preparing for this and I guess that's political in its own sense as well. It's one of those reasons why um, there are so many people that still want to keep nuclear uh, weapons going. And, and because there is this fear of if we don't have the defense there as a deterrent, then who's going to invade? And I um, I guess it's, it's something that, like, even though it's not my political value or my belief um i i understand it and i see i see where those people are coming from and i like yeah um uh, different people have seen different things to me you know like different people have seen war they've seen uh the the results of not being prepared um and and those kind of things so who am i to talk on that i suppose just a peace loving hippie And preemptive strikes. So that again comes down to that kind of defense thing. And and this was one of those. Um, this is this is something that that is is quite good for a story in a sense. If you believe a country is um, uh, or a, a culture or a community is is looking to attack you, um, and there's a certain amount of paranoia that comes with that, then if you attack first, you essentially you become the bad guy. But were you defending? 
were you attacking like what was the what 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 comes in there like if someone's been being um angry at you and and you believe that there is a uh, a point that they might come and attack you uh who attacks first and you, and you see it in videos of people when they're fighting or when they're having arguments and things like that um who gets to like it might be the person who is being bullied or being uh pushed into a corner that attacks first you know and um there there are many reasons that the the good guy and the bad guy dependent on who wh what your what your view is could be the person who f who strikes first you know so how are your wars waged or how are the wars waged in your world so we have a bunch of different ways that wars are waged in our world um uh things are becoming more more kind of cyber and social and um that in itself is quite insidious really when you look at look at social warfare um because you like the your 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 culture your community can be controlled by thought you know by by manipulation of thought and manipulation of their uh their world view and if you think about like our uh, our phones i'm sure some of you have kind of been talking to someone and about something and the next day you're getting advertisements for it on google or something like that and um you're like wow where did this come from like i didn't even search this I, th th there's no recollection of this in my history you have a little microphone in your pocket that's probably listening to you all the time especially if you've got something like siri or okay google enabled it's always listening out for your voice because it you know it it wants to be able to act upon your command um but that doesn't mean that it's not taking note of different uh keywords that you're saying about different things who knows who knows that's a little bit conspiracy theory sorry guys but that's something that you can include in your world building you know like maybe people have had implants in their brains maybe they do have these kind of watches or phones or or computers or things that that are listening to them anyway how are these wars waged so cold wars so wars where it's kind of a back and forth of um we're building this we have these nuclear co capabilities and then someone else is going well we have this nuclear capability so as soon as you hit us we're going to hit you um you know so that kind of um standoff technology based like i was talking about just a second ago um the the kind of the phones or the cyber attacks or taking down um government kind of computer systems those kind of things battles infantry and war machines so this is what you'll find mostly in kind of like historical or fantasy based uh games and and um stories biological warfare so probably the scariest one um of, of them all is biological warfare in the you know we are we are biological entities we are we are flesh and bone and blood and lungs and organs and all these kind of things that require air to to survive you know uh, we require food we require all of these kind of things if you biologically stop people from being able to gain the things that they need to be able to survive that's quite scary um uh, and infecting people you know like all of these kind of things they're very very um psychologically very damaging speaking now whilst we're in the midst of a pandemic look at how how much fear is in the populace about certain things look at how many people don't believe in it look at how like when we look at these kind of things and we look at the kind of the the, the ideologies and the beliefs that come out of the situation um society is and and you have to remember when you build worlds and you're trying to build worlds that are um things that people can believe in our society is changing day to day and and the kinds of people that are around and that are gaining um traction and, and being listened to change day to day uh populism as a as a form of politics is so interesting that the 
um, people like Trump and Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage are, you know, like, people have fears, people have things that maybe are pretty unfounded, but they, for some unknown reason, have been told one thing or another, and it's easy to play on those fears, and it's easy to make things, um, those are, those are manipulatable, you know, uh, fears are palatable for people, and to be able to manipulate that for social gain or for for power gain is incredibly like powerful uh look at the situation in america after the um after the biden win uh look at anti-maskers anti-vaxxers and all of these ideologies are quite dangerous and and um they may not seem it to those that are that, that are that are following them but the the be all and end all of it is that it doesn't just come down to you not doing something like not getting vaccinated or not wearing a mask or you don't believe that the the election was fair it comes down to the repercussions of that so with the election thing you're essentially saying that the the political establishment doesn't work um and the only way it's going to work is if someone takes control and that's how you end up in a dictatorship and if that's what you want then i guess great for you um but also you you end up in a police state or you could end up with someone that is tyrannical um and and doesn't care about the people that they're supposed to be protecting or looking after and then who are they protecting who are they looking at same thing goes for wearing a mask. Like you may think, oh, not wearing a mask is 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 fine, and it's my right, and and um, I'll go to the shops wearing nothing at all if I want. But that kind of ideology means that, yeah, you're 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 doing something for yourself, but you're also putting other people in danger. You're putting systems in danger that were in place. You know, um, yeah, I, bi biological and ideolo ideology based kind of warfare is 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 scary stuff man when you think about it and um there's no better kind of view of that than the cambridge analytica documentary which i believe was on netflix if you get the chance to watch it it's, it's very very scary to see how people can be manipulated and um how and how very little social responsibility uh different organizations have um, that have a lot of our data and a lot of our kind of vision time you know like we spend a lot of time on the internet and even more so now we're locked inside um so yeah sorry that got that got a little bit again very conspiracy theory uh, i'm not very good with war as you can probably tell i don't really like conflict i'm not a big conflict guy so uh here we go so terrorism terrorism is again uh, this is something that when we look at stuff like Star Wars, our terrorists in that, that instance are the good guys. Um, which is strange because when we think about terrorism and we look at terrorism and we go, well, terror, it's in the name, it's bad, it's scary, it's horrifying. But then what, what if you put those people as rebels or freedom fighters? They're still committing acts of terrorism somewhere along the lines. But then all war is terrorism. It all of it, all it's it's an act that is intended to cause terror, that is intended to cause some form of uh, worry and and a backlash in some way, shape, or form that gives you the, that that it amounts and gives you more reason to commit atrocities and, and create war. So think about things that may not fit the recent definition of any of these also. Guy Fawkes was technically trying to commit the act of terrorism, but was glorified by V in V for Vendetta. Um, and again, like I said, the rebels in, in Star Wars. Spinning those kind of tropes on their heads, are a, a, it's a very interesting way to look at world building and story building. When we start to kind of like turn things on their heads and start looking at who's right and who's wrong, you get some very interesting um, moral quandaries and moral conundrums that come up in that. Because, uh, for instance, maybe maybe peace is never a viable option uh, under kind of the freedom of people 
like people being free to do what they want so free to be greedy free to be uh glory hunting free to want to kind of go out and do whatever they want to do those those kind of freedoms mean that you're always going to have bad people there's always going to be bad people there but then if you take away those freedoms and and you start to kind of have police states or any of those kind of things you are punishing the people that maybe are you know that that, that deserve their freedoms and that deserves that deserve their rights um yeah, it's, it's a very, 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 very deep uh, rabbit hole to get yourself into. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, think about it for your for your well building, because it'll like it, don't just have war for the sake of war. There's there's no point in just going, well, these people don't like each other. Well, why don't they like each other? What what have they done in the past? Why has it gotten to this point? Maybe it was a breakdown in communication and, and that was it. Or maybe one slighted the other in a way that that meant that uh, a political marriage that was supposed to go on between two clans or kingdoms uh, didn't go ahead for a certain reason, and um, that has been an insult on the on the, the the kingdom. Okay, so there's a lot to think about there, and a lot to kind of unpack. So if you wanna if you wanna pause the video now to kind of go over everything in your world, then please do. Uh but if you just want to listen to me continue going through this then So what are the results of war? What are the results of, of the conflicts that go on in your world? Who wins? So if someone wins, are there certain things that happen? Like do we take spoils of war? Do we instill a new government what what are like what are the results of that has the landscape of your world changed at all like do we, do we have big craters where certain weapons were used or um have forests been felled to make way for war machines um have castles been erected have, like any any one kind of thing have cities come like and been built up so uh london has been burnt and and rebuilt more times than anyone knows like um well people do know <laughs> what am i talking about so uh yeah like has the landscape changed have there been concessions made so if if someone uh accepts defeat did that country accept any concessions? Are they now vassal states to to other to other kingdoms, or um, have they promised a certain amount of wealth to that country as as we go along? Do different cultures now have more or less land? Have the have the borders changed? Have nations changed? Like what is uh, what what now is the is the political landscape of your map? Innocent people and families, what's the fallout of that? So the people that fought the war or the farmers or the um, just the people in the cities that were trying to work and trying to make the most of their time, what is their, what's their position now? Have we lost cultures? Have cultures been lost and wiped out? Have they, have they gone? Is there no longer certain cultures in the world how is the economy fared is the economy booming now that there's new people in charge or is it completely lost is everything gone um how long will it take for people to start buying things again for people to be able to afford to live like are are the people that have won are they funneling money back into the countries that they've taken stuff from um uh, what kind of uh and what about if if people have, have won like has the economy been boosted by an income of of oil or commodity or whatever it is that people were fighting for what how has their economy either suffered or gained from that and the changes of leadership so then we can we can attach that to our cultures and communities as well like if if leadership changes what is the result of that how do people feel about that how do people kind of uh rectify that in their own minds and and how do they um take those changes on and, and work with them so here's a big question that comes from any kind of conflict 
And it doesn't mean that, that anyone is right or is wrong. Um, and it's very kind of, it's one of those massively contestable things that different people will choose. Obviously, things like the Nazi regime was very black and white. We, when we look back in history, the kind of, the atrocities of the Nazi regime were the results of evil. They were, the, the, the like, Holocaust was evil. There is no doubt about that. Um, the kind of, the idea of an Aryan race is evil it's it's pure evil you know uh there is there is no kind of um that ideology there's there's no there's no making that right uh so that isn't in contest those kind of ideologies are not in contest but then if we look at something like world of warcraft for instance which is great for this because it's changed so much over the over its many years um the horde versus the alliance debate and when uh, when I wrote this this PowerPoint, the most recent um, uh, expansion was Battle for Azeroth, which changed a lot of things for a lot of players, especially Horde players, um, who were kind of like for all along had been going, well, there is still a chance, and and there's still like we are the good guys, we we are fighting for freedom, we don't want to be uh, constrained by lives in big cities we are a tribal people we we want to keep our culture and our community and we want to we want to live our way um and the alliance you know the alliance had their they they had their ways and they had their things and both of them would try to do things that would um you know influence the other and and push each other to war or uh, you know all kinds of different things but when Battle for Azeroth came out, which was supposed to be something that that kind of made people go back to that that warring kind of aspect of um, World of Warcraft. It's in the name uh, because the the game had kind of changed so much. Where the Horde and the Alliance were working together a lot, and they were they were all working towards the same ends. Battle for Azeroth changed that and made it so we were back at each other's necks we were we were we were fighting again and we were against one another and the way that the blizzard uh, writers went about doing that was to actually commit atrocities were was to to have characters well not the writers obviously they they didn't go out and burn the tree of darnassus uh, but they they chose to have their characters in the horde commit atrocities they had Sylvanas kind of leave behind allies to save the Horde, but then lead the Horde on Darnassus and destroy the, the Elven home, you know. Um, and it changed the world. It changed how uh, the, the culture was seen. It changed how the community was seen. It splintered uh, the, the Horde. There were the horde that believed Sylvanas was right, and there was the horde that that kind of fought against that idea and wanted to keep honor and and um, the 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 kind of the the core tenets of the horde's kind of ideology, and and they wanted to to uphold that kind of honor and 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 this pissed off a lot of players you know it pissed off people that had worked so hard to to cultivate these characters that they believed in and even if they're not role players or uh, players that really pay that much attention to the good and the bad um or the story or anything like that the they have an idea of what their character is and and all these heroic deeds that they've done and all the things that they have achieved to have that ripped away and to be told that you're evil because of the 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 country that you're a part of or the community that you're a part of um and and to have something to justify that and to believe in that uh that that's a super powerful kind of thing to 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 fire at someone um and and it's 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 a horrible thing to have to uh to have to come to terms with you know like so i was speaking to a friend recently who said that 
it takes a lot for people to change their their worldviews and the things that they've been brought up with even if they're not right like if you've had these things instilled into you it's you know like people don't change and i was like well people do change and they do change these kind of ideologies and these views but it yeah it is hard and it takes a lot of internalizing and, and learning and, and changing and, and doing these kind of things so rebellion in the empire so i spoke about this uh a little bit back a little kind of a few minutes ago um if the bad guys win do the good guys fight back do they take up arms in protest do they adopt more extreme means of taking down what they see as a fascist regime so we can agree on things that are fascist but then i've seen fascists call anti-fascists fascists you know um it's it's like the the scary thing about humanity is that everyone has a different ideology <laughs> but it's also one of the greatest things about humanity you know um the fact that we can all have these differing opinions is what makes us intrinsically a uh a great society but also a very scary society um our ideas of right and wrong are they're interesting you know they're 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 interesting to the point that you can have people that follow a religion and that religion might state that killing is wrong or this is wrong or this is wrong or thieving is wrong and all of these kind of things but if someone is is sees this or reads this in a different way um and thinks that okay well actually this this reads like this to me that changes and and they can start to believe like lead other people to believe a similar kind of world like mindset um and that's that's how we end up with different sects of religions some uh or different sects of law you know and and people acting out those values through their um through uh, justified by their moral code you know it's muddy it's very muddy um and and these kind of things are things that when we look at our world building and the stories that we start to create and if we use conflict and war all of these kind of things can come into it and and like you you can think about these things rather than just having a Yes, it was this guy versus this guy, and this guy won. Okay, well, what's the fallout of that? And why does that matter? Okay. So this is another one of those really, really interesting uh, ideas. And that is, do the good guys live long enough to see themselves become the bad guys? Someone is always going to feel railroaded by their leaders. And how long does the world stay in a state of peace? And this is no more prevalent than in our in our pol politics, um, especially in the Western world, when we look at stuff like we have four year terms for prime minister or president or whatever it is. Um, and within that time, they may have had good intentions and they may have come in bringing hope and and an idea that we were going to prosper but then we get to the end of that four year term and nothing's been done and and things have only gotten worse and they've had to make decisions that that maybe they when we voted for them or when we brought them in they they wouldn't have like we wouldn't have thought they would have done that and again this comes back to that idea that your your ideas and your views can change like your ideologies can change your who you follow can change what everything can change and it can change like that it doesn't have to just be like someone kind of having this long drawn out kind of ideological breakdown it can just be a case of i wanted people to be safe this person has made it so these people are not safe and you can just go boom i don't like this anymore this is not this is not for me um and i i think people there's there's a stubbornness to humanity I, I can tell you about it because i am incredibly stubborn 
um and and it does take longer for us to see things sometimes but if if i believed in someone that i thought was going to do something f that i believed in uh, like the safety of people and then put them all in danger then i would no longer believe in that person and that would be it you know um and those things you know like you you want to believe that you've made the right decision and i think we as a uh, as a as a as people uh, it sucks to have to admit you're wrong uh and i it took a lot for me to learn especially to go okay yeah i was wrong that's it it's hard you know but as we get older <laughs> not to kind of uh, put myself on that i'm getting old uh but you kind of stop caring about being right and start caring about the people that that you know that you care about and that's you know everyone has that to some extent but yeah we're only here we're only here for a set amount of time so important points in history obviously things that can spark war or come about after war or or um, historical kind of points like if someone was elected in or uh, things have changed in the world that can change the face of your world so stuff like laws passing abolishment of other laws uprisings and usurping crowning of a new king or queen or monarchy in general uh, new leaders, new directions, discoveries like scientific discoveries or religious discoveries or um, kind of magical discovery, whatever it is. All of these kind of things can change the direction of your culture and your community. Um, and again, look to real life for, for inspiration. Look to... Um, kind of places in the world for for inspiration you'll get no there are some things that are you know that you wouldn't believe happen in the real world but they do um and yeah uh, look at how it changes your culture and your community okay guys so that was the end of my cultures and communities video uh it was a little bit longer than i thought it was going to be uh because I, this is kind of part two of that cultures and communities and history and conflict and yeah uh it's it's a really interesting and deep divey kind of subject to be able to get into uh again i've i've put across a lot of my political views whilst talking about this and i'm sorry about that to some extent but not sorry at the same time um those ideas and those ideals like when i create worlds i do i do put that across and i do give that to people you know and if they want to fight against it then that's cool like i'm totally fine with people kind of questioning ideologies in worlds that i've created and you should be too you know like open open minds and open hearts are kind of the way that i do any kind of creating and if you come at it with that same kind of love and care for the people that are, are, are taking on board whatever you're creating uh that is for me that's the best way uh in a way to create worlds that 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 mean something to the people that are in them um so thank you very much for for watching the video and hopefully this has given you some ideas and some things to think about and um again if anything i've said in the uh in the video is too political for you or or has made you reflect in a way that maybe you're not cool with uh kind of sorry again but also not sorry um uh, because that's good reflecting on your views changing views or thinking about the values that you have and doing these kind of things is the way that we develop as human beings and it's the way we develop worlds and we develop encompassing ideologies that mean that we can kind of give more love and give more care to those people that matter to us you know um so yeah awesome thank you so much guys i hope you have a fantastic day um, if this video has been useful for you, please give it a like down at the bottom. Uh, 
<laughs> I, like if you want to subscribe subscribe amazing uh if you don't don't and uh yeah have a fantastically awesome day it's far too early for me and uh take care much love Thank you.